Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome once again uh, for, to our online service as we share the word of the Lord, as we encourage each other in this way. It is, uh, uh, the Bible says the, uh, the way is straight and narrow and there are many dangers. And we want to always be encouraged to be having the word of the Lord upholding us. And before we continue, I will start with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'd like to thank you. I'd like to say, Jehovah God, a great thank you for the grace of God. The favor that God you have bestowed over our lives, that you have given us yet again another opportunity, another chance to come before thee, to approach that throne of grace, that we may find grace and mercy to help in the time of need. Dear God, as we go through the word of the Lord, I pray, Jehovah, give us the understanding, give us a enlightenment, O Jehovah God, that we may get to understand. Even Father, use me as a vessel, as an instrument in thy hand to minister to your people. I thank you. I bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. We are so grateful. We are so thankful uh, to the Lord. And I would like to urge you, you take your Bible, you take your notebook. Today we may go through a lengthy lesson because I'm answering a question that somebody asked. And the Bible say, come and let us listen together in the book of Isaiah. The first chapter and verse number 18, this is God inviting people that they come and we sit and we listen together. The Bible say, come now and let us listen together. And we are going to go through the word of the Lord, listening together through the scriptures. And the question that was asked by one of our members, one of our uh, congregants that have uh, uh, asked a question has followed us uh, through the time we have been in the social media or online services. They asked a question and the question is based on the word of the Lord and uh, the Bible is talking about in the book of uh, Genesis, the first, the sixth chapter, and first number two, the question is based on that first of scripture. And today I may not shout, I may not uh, uh, preach, uh, but it is something that I want us to go through together that we may reason out the word of the Lord. Genesis, the sixth chapter, and first number two, uh, the Bible says that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Uh, this is the question. The question based on this verse of scripture, and then he said, who are these sons of God? And uh, why? what are these daughters of men that they saw and they saw they were fair? And he said to his understanding and what he was told and he was made to understand by somebody is that the sons of God are angels. That is uh, what he was made to understand. And uh, the question was, is it true? 
uh, these sons of God uh, angels. And if it is angels, then did that mean that the angels uh, had a relationship with the daughters of men? And the Bible is talking about that. So they, they wanted me to explain that. And on set, I want to say these sons of uh, these sons of God are not angels because the Bible say in the book of Hebrews, the first chapter and verse number five, the Bible say, a first of scripture lies there, there is no single angel that God called his son. The Bible say, for unto which of the angels said he unto any time thou art my son. Uh, this is to disqualify the, the line of thought and the, the teaching that the, what the Bible is referring to as the sons of God in the book of Genesis, uh, the sixth chapter, it is not angels. They were not angels because the Bible says, for unto whom, unto whom, unto, for unto which of the angels said he, at any time, thou art my son. Uh, that means there is no angel that is called a son of God. Uh, angels are messengers. Uh, they are ministering spirits. Uh, they are people that carry the message of God. Even a pastor of a local church is called an angel. An angel is a messenger. So these angels were not, in the book of Genesis, were not. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 these sons of God were not angels, but we want to establish uh, what was this? So the Bible is saying now, going back to the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, uh, verse number one, if I may start now from there, the Bible is saying, Genesis, the sixth chapter, and verse number one, uh, the Bible is saying, it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Now, this man, the Bible is talking about, it is the, the, the posterity or the children of Adam. Uh, when Adam was created together with his wife and God created them, uh, then God blessed them and he said, multiply and be fruitful and replenish the earth. So a time came, they started now multiplying. Uh, these are what we are talking about. Men, I want to say like their men is the generation of the children of Adam, a fallen man. Remember, Adam had fallen. And, but the sons of God, I said, these were not uh, angels, but there is talking about two groups of people in the, in the, in the universe at this time. Uh, the Bible is saying uh, here in the book of, again, Genesis, the fourth chapter, uh, when God, after he had created Adam and Eve, then Adam was blessed with the two children. And the Bible says, first number one of the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter, and Adam knew if his wife and she conceived and bare Cain and said I have begotten men from the Lord I have begotten men from the Lord now this man is now what you are saying the sons of men uh, this is what you are calling the sons of men and also the sons of God so there's a difference like there in the sons of men and the daughter in the sons of God and the daughters of men and the Bible is saying, I'm reading still in the book of uh, Genesis, the fourth chapter. And again, the Bible says, verse number two, and she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now, these are now the generations of Adam uh, when God now blessed them and when God now uh, gave him, uh, gave them children, and the first child was Cain, and the other one, the second born, was Abel. And uh, the Bible says, uh, but unto uh, first number three, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord, because Cain was a tiller of the land. And first number four, the Bible says, uh, uh, out of what Cain was doing, he brought an offering. First number four, and Abel, he also brought of the first rings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord respected and had respect unto Abel and, and to his offering. Now, I would like you to not lie there. God has accepted uh, the offering 
and the sacrifice of Abel, not of Cain. These are two sons of Adam. The firstborn is Cain and the other one is Abel. And in the process of time, uh, they brought an offering. That means then that when even if Adam was uh, expelled from the Garden of Eden, he continued to maintain a true worship. He continued to have a relationship with God and he taught his children that God has to be respected. You have to be thankful to the Lord as a giver of life. And you have also always to offer a sacrifice in an appreciation of his protection and also his providences. So Adam taught the two boys, uh, his children, that you have always to honor God. You have always to appreciate God, number one, for he is the giver of life. And because of that, you always give thanks unto him. And number two, you offer a sacrifice unto him, a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And that is why we see now the two boys, the parents are not there, but the two boys, one of them, because he was a tiller of the land, he went to his store and he took something that he had harvested, first number three, and he prepared a sacrifice. And by the way, in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground because he was a tiller of the land and offers a, offers a sacrifice unto the Lord. And then the second born boy, that is Abel, first number four, he also now brought also the first, bring, first strings of his flock. And the Bible is saying, uh, and of the fat. And the Lord, now that is the thing, and the Lord had respect of, his, uh, of the, 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 the sacrifice of, of Abel more than of the, the sacrifice of Cain. And now that time, at that point now, we see now there is a change. First number five, and unto Cain, God said, and unto Cain, uh, God, uh, and unto Cain, and to his offering, he had no respect, and Cain was very wrathful, and his countenance fell. Uh, like you to see now there, the, 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 the Lesbos, the last months of Cain, uh, he became wrathful. Uh, he started turning that hatred to his brother, first number six. And the Bible is saying, and um, uh, first number six, and the Lord said unto Cain, uh, Why art thou wrathful, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, first number seven, uh, shalt thou not be accepted? Uh, so that is now we see uh, the beginning of these two brothers now they are starting now uh to 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 have that differences among themselves and between them uh, there is differences between them uh, because once a sacrifice that is uh, abel was accepted and the sacrifice of cain was not accepted and now that from that point he cain now started now planning on how to kill his brother on how to destroy his brother, uh, first number six, uh, first number eight, and Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother Abel and slew him. Now look at that. Now we have seen now these are two brothers from the same father. One is called Cain and the other one is called Abel, and they have offered a sacrifice to the Lord, and one of their sacrifice that is their sacrifice of abel has been accepted by the lord and the sacrifice of cain has not been uh, accepted and cain became wrathful against his brother and he started scheming on how to destroy and to kill his brother because he hated him uh, he said god has favored my younger brother remember cain was the firstborn and now he is feeling like he should have been the first one uh, to be accepted. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's uh, got to respect his uh, sacrifice. But now God changed that and he took the sacrifice and accepted the sacrifice of Abel. And in the process of time, he started scheming, scheming and planning of how he'll get an opportunity to kill him because he was a lot of fool. He hated him. And he talked to him, confusing, confusing him. They go to the field, the two of them, away from their parents, away from, uh, from uh, uh, the list of, uh, or rather the two parents, that is Adam and Eve. And when they were just the two of them, then now he schemed to kill his brother. And indeed, he killed his brother. And that was the beginning 
of a problem. That was the beginning of a problem because now Cain, now uh, God turned against Cain and the Lord said unto Cain, where is uh, Abel, verse number 9, and the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel, thy brother? Remember we are asking, uh, we are answering a question that an individual led the first of scripture in Genesis, the sixth chapter, about the sons of God and the daughters of men. And he was made to understand that the sons of God were angels. Uh, that is referring there, it is referring to angels. But that scripture is not referring to angels. And that is why I'm showing you and we are working together to show you indeed these were men. And these men, they are represented by Cain here. Uh, they, 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 the sons of God are represented by Abel and the daughters of men are represented by Cain. And God is asking this man, where is your brother? And he said unto the Lord, I don't know. And he said, am I my brother's keeper? Uh, now there's a conversation between now uh, Cain and the Lord. And now God come in, he says, verse number 10, and, and he said, and he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me uh, from the ground. And remember, Abel is dead and Cain is now alive and have a discussion with the Lord. And now, verse number 11, and now, and now art thou cursed. Now remember now, because of what now Cain has done, God had now to pronounce a curse. God had to pronounce a curse upon Abel. Upon Cain, sorry, upon Cain, because he has killed his brother. That is the first crime that was ever committed on the face of the earth. The murder crime, and that was uh, Cain killing his brother Abel. And now thou art cursed. And Cain is cursed, like here, verse number 11. And he said, From the north which thou hast opened her mouth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brothers, from the ground, sorry, which has opened her mouth. To curse, uh, 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 to receive thy brother's blood from the, thy, thine hand. Verse number 12. That's what I wanted. Now he says now, this is the curse. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto her, unto her strength. And number two, you are going to be a fugitive and a vagabond. Now two punishment lie there. Two curses lie there because of Cain killing his brother now because of cain killing his brother lie there then a line was drawn between a righteous seed and another seed that was evil the bible is saying if i can quickly go to the book of first john the fifth the third chapter and first number 12 not as cain which was of that wicked one cain was of that wicked one because he killed his brother and he's now he is told he said he is of that wicked one and the wicked one is the devil uh, because he is the murderer from the beginning and he slew his brother uh, and wh wherefore uh, slew he him why did he kill him he said because his own works were evil the works of Cain were evil, and he is called, he is of that wicked one. So you find, and the Bible says, and his brother's work was righteous. Abel's work was righteous, and Cain's work uh, was evil. So you find now, because of the act of Cain, then there is a line that is drawn right there between the righteous and the evil. And the evil are represented by Cain, but the righteous are represented by Abel, and Abel is killed. Now, because of him killing his brother, God pronounces a curse. Back to Genesis, uh, the, the, sixth, the fourth chapter, and verse number 12. And the curse is that one is that the ground will not yield to compensate, uh, to compensate Cain's work. An effort on the ground. He will sow, he will till the land, but the ground will not yield to the strength. Uh, the ground will not yield uh, to the same uh, uh, work that has been put on it. And number two is that Cain was going to be a fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. Uh, so this is the curse that God has pronounced upon uh, Cain and first number, uh, first number, 
verse number 13, the Bible says, And Cain said unto, unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Now, I want you to know there, there is no repentance. In the life of Cain, and the word that is coming from Cain is not asking for forgiveness. But he is now trying to justify that though I have committed this by the judgment is so severe compared. Yet if it was a child of God, if it was a righteous seed, the first thing he would have said is forgive me. Like we have Simeon, uh, the sorcerer, in the book of Acts, the 8th chapter, when, when Peter uh, said to Simeon, the sorcerer, uh, that uh, thy money perish with you. And this man, he was quickly to say, please pray for me. Please forgive me. Please help me. I don't want to be a partaker of this pronunciation that you have pronounced of God's wrath upon my life. He was quickly, if I can lash the light there in the book of Acts, the, the eighth chapter, I believe it should be the book of Acts, the eighth chapter, verse number 13. Then Simeon uh, himself believed also, and, and when he saw, uh, when he was baptized, he said, and then Simeon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which was done. This was a man uh, pretending to have con been converted, to have been a believer. Uh, remember, he was a sorcerer, and when he started observing the miracles that uh, Philip was performing, now verse number 14, now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of the Lord, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, verse number 16, the Bible says, For as yet he had not fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse number 17, Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. They laid their hand on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And verse number, uh, verse number 18, the Bible says, And when Simeon saw that through the laying on of, of the hands uh, the, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Look at that. He offered them money. I'm showing you the spirit between, the difference between the spirit of Simeon and that of uh, a Cain. And the Bible says, verse number 19, he said he get, offered them money saying, give me also this power that on whosoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost, verse number 20. Uh, and, but Peter said unto him, thy money perish with thee. Because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Uh, verse number 21, uh, thou, he said, thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thine heart is not right in the sight of God. Verse number 22, repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray, uh, uh, pray God for perhaps, if perhaps the thoughts of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Look at that. He said, pray for me. Uh, that these, the thoughts, may be forgiven of the Lord. And he said, uh, verse number 20, he said, verse number 23, For I have perceived that thou art in the gall of bitterness, and in the bond, bond of iniquity. Then answered Simeon and, uh, and said, uh, uh, said, Then answered Simeon and said, Pray ye to the Lord. He said, Then answered Simeon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of the things that which you have spoken come upon me. Look at that. The difference between this man called Simeon and Cain. When key Cain is, is cursed, instead of asking for forgiveness and repentance, he is saying it is too much. He, he is not trying to say, please forgive me. Please, I was a mistake. Please, I, I, I was misled. But he is saying it is too much. And that is the problem with many of God's people. They try to justify. They try to justify themselves. And Cain here is trying to justify himself, saying he did the right thing. The only thing he has a problem with is the judgment, is the punishment. But he is justifying the act of killing his brother. And that is the problem uh, that we are seeing now coming right there. The seed of the righteous and the seed of unrighteous. The wicked and the good and the righteous, the evil and the good. 
So back to the book of Genesis, uh, the, the fourth chapter, and he is complaining, verse number 13, he is complaining, and he is saying, and Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Instead of bowing his knees and saying, forgive me for killing my brother. And you find a lot of people, they have that tendency. They have messed up. They have contravened the word of God. They have sinned. And when the sin is exposed, instead of asking for forgiveness, they start even having a problem with the pastor. They say the pastor rebuked me sharply. Yet, they were supposed just to say, please pray to the Lord. Like Simeon is saying, pray to the Lord that this, what you have said, will be and not be what will happen upon me. And I have repented. Praise the name of the Lord. And God drove, the Bible is saying, verse number 14, Behold, thou hast driven me out of this day. He said, Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. Now he has been driven uh, from where his parents were, uh, from where God's presence was. He has been now, as it were, detached from a true worship, from his parents. Remember, even after Adam and Eve were taken out of the Garden of Eden, they continued maintaining true worship. They continued offering sacrifices unto the Lord. The only thing they didn't have was that fellowship. God will no longer come now and, and have a, a fellowship with them in the cool of the day. But they continued worshiping God. They continued calling on this God. But now their children, when they have been taught on how to go about it, how to offer sacrifices, one killed the other, and the murderer who is Cain is driven out. It is like taken out, like the Bible is saying in the book of Genesis, the third chapter and verse number eight, the Bible is saying, Genesis, and they had the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. In other words, to hide themselves from the, God, from the presence of the Lord, it is removing themselves from where God was walking, from where God was coming, from where the presence, they are bored of God. They are no longer now having that walking and that fellowship with God. And that is what happened uh, to Cain. Cain was driven out. Praise the name of the Lord. Cain was driven out. The Bible said, Behold, thou hast driven me back to the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter. You have driven me out this day uh, from the face of the earth. And from thy face shall I be hid. Shall I be hid. And I shall be a vegetative and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall be, it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. So another thing that he felt was taken off was security. He didn't have security and he didn't have a place to stay. That is what is happening. God is drawing a line between the righteous, the seed of God or the sons of God and the daughters or the progeny of Cain. So the Bible is talking about this man is cursed and verse number 16, the Bible says, and Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. And dwelt in the land of Nod and on the east of Eden. He is out and he went uh, no longer now uh, staying with his parents. Remember the parents are upset with him. They have ki he has killed their, uh, uh, their second born son. And now he, he, he is just left alone. Praise the name of the Lord. He is left alone. And the Bible is saying, uh, first number uh, 17, uh, first number 16, now he is, has gone out of the presence of the Lord. He is just alone. He is having no fellowship with God. God has nothing to do with him. First number 17, and the Bible is saying, and Cain knew his wife. Now Cain might have given, or rather, had, might have married before he killed his brother. And he killed his wife, or rather, he knew his wife and she conceived. Now look at this. I want you to follow here. Cain has known his wife. That is, they, 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 they now gave birth. And she conceived and bare Enoch. Now this Enoch is not the, the Enoch that walked with God in the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter. 
This was the son of Cain. Hallelujah. This is not the, the Enoch of that the Bible says he walked with God and he was not for God took him. No, this is the son of Cain and he built a city. Now listen to this. He has accepted the separation and to approve that then he built a city for himself and his children and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Now that is now permanent separation. He has removed himself from, he was chased away from his parents and from his other people. He is now a vagabond, he is a fugitive, but he went and built a city outside and away from the rest of the people. And he started now having his own family. He started now having his own family. Now we see, as we were saying in First John, uh, the third chapter and first number 12, we have now the son, uh, he said, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and who wherefore slew he him, because his works were evil, and his brother's work was righteous. Now look at the two. One is righteous, and the other one is evil. One is righteous and the other one is evil. So Cain went and built a city and he called the name of the city after his own son's name. Meaning there is now total and complete separation. They are no longer now working together. They are no longer meeting again because now he has now been separated. Now two groups right there. There is now Cain and his family. And we have Adam and Eve. We have Adam and Eve. And now from there we see verse number 18 of the book of Acts, or rather Genesis, the fourth chapter, through to verse number 24, we see the children of Cain. We see they are talking about how Cain and unto Enoch was born Arad. Now these are the children and the Bible runs through. The Bible runs through the, 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 the prosper, pro, posterity of Cain. The children of Cain, they ran through all the way up to first number, first number, uh, first number 24. Hallelujah. So we find now, and that is closed. And remember, my brother, that you asked this question. Remember you that you are listening to me. They are talking about uh, the sons of God and the daughters of men. Now we are seeing the separation. So these, the children that were born by Cain, from Cain's lineage, they are called men. Remember men, he was a man. But we have another seed, that is the seed of God. And this seed of God is represented, was represented by Abel, but Abel has been killed. So what happens? He has been murdered. What happens? And the Bible says, verse number 25 of the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter, and the Bible is saying, and Adam knew his wife again. Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Sheth. Seth, and this brother called Seth, for he said, for God, for God, said she, have appointed me another seed instead of Abel. Now look at the placement. Abel was supposed to be the one who will carry that seed of God. The people that are going to worship God in sincerity and in truth. But too bad he has been killed. He has been murdered by his wicked brother. That was representing the seed of man. It was representing the wicked fallen nature of man. But we have another line there that was Abel that was going to per perpetuate the righteous seed, but he is dead. Now, God had to give Adam and Eve another child, and they called this man uh, uh, Seth, and Seth, the Bible is saying, for she said, he, God have appointed me, God have appointed me another, uh, 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 me another seed. Now, look at that. In the time of sorrow, remember, I like you to note here, brethren, that Adam and Eve, we are not healing them from the time they were thrown out of the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis. We don't hear about Adam again and Eve. But we are healing now them again in Genesis, the fourth chapter. Why? Because they were in sorrow. 
They, they have, remember, they have lost their second-born son through murder because of the sick firstborn who murdered the second-born. And the firstborn has been banished. So they are left without a seed. They are left. So in their soul of nefness, Rebecca said in the book of Genesis, the 27th chapter and verse number 45, Rebecca said when Jacob took the firstborn blessings of his brother, and he also almost killed him. Listen to what Rebecca said, verse number 44. The Bible says, and tell there, verse number 43. The Bible is saying, now therefore, my son, obey my voice, and arise free thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran. Verse 244. And tell there with him a few days, until thy brother's fury turn away. Verse 45. Until thy brother's anger turn away from thee. And he forget that, that which thou hast done to him, then I will send, I will send and fetch thee from thence. She said, Why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? Here is Lebega, he said, How can I lose? I cannot stand even that thought of me losing both of you, because your brother will come and kill you. And if your brother kills you, according to the law of Moses, he is supposed to be killed. And at, at the end of the eight, of, then I'll lose both of you. So Re Rebecca is saying, free, go away. Because I cannot bear, I cannot stand that, that I'll lose both of you. He said, why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? Praise the name of the Lord. And that is now at that point of grief and sorrow. God visited Adam and Eve back to Genesis, the fourth chapter and verse number 25, and they are given a son. And this son is called Seth. Now listen to this. It is a replacement. For God, she said, have appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain this is the mother who is saying, whom Cain slew. First number 26. And the Bible says, and to Seth. And to Seth, to him also, there was born a son. Listen to this. There was born a son to Seth now. And he called his name Enos. The name of the son of Seth. Remember, thou Seth is replacing Abel that was killed. That was supposed to perpetuate and to carry on the seed of God, the, the, the righteous, because Cain was evil and Abel was righteous. Then Seth to Seth was God gave him a son and he called his name Enos. And the Bible says, Then, then, at that point when Enos was born, then began men to call upon the name of of the Lord. Then after the birth of Enos, in other words, the righteous seed has been revived and restored. Remember, Cain killed Abel. So it is as though men stopped worshiping God. Men stopped being called by the name of the Lord. That calling on the name of the Lord then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. In my Bible, in the center column, it says, then men began to be called Men began to be called by the name of the Lord. Men began now to be to, to, to appreciate that they are called. He said in the like in the book of Isaiah the 60th chapter and verse number 19, the Bible says, We are thine. Look at that. We are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. That is, we and them. And that has always been like this. From the time of Cain. There has been we and them. We are thine. Then when Enos was born, men started, began to call upon the name of the Lord. And that means then men started now appreciating God and less tolling the true worship. Praise the name of the Lord. So Isaiah is saying in the book of Isaiah, the 60th that chapter and verse number 19, we are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. Listen to the next statement. They were not called. 
by thy name. They were not called. Now, before Enos was born, men were not called by the name of the Lord. In other words, God was not recognizing him or other men at that time as his seed. Because remember, it is coming from the life lineage of Cain. And Cain sinned by killing his brother. And he was declared a fugitive and a vagabond. God didn't want and he was removed from the presence of God. Where God's presence was, where God's power, where God's true worship was, Cain was removed and he became a fugitive and a vagabond. But I thank God for the born birth of uh, Enos. Remember, uh, 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 Eve said when Seth was born that I have gotten an replacement. In state of Abel that was killed by Cain. And she said, and when now this man is born, then men started calling themselves by the name of the Lord. Isaiah the 44th chapter and verse number 5. This is what the Bible is saying. Once, uh, once shall say, I am the Lord's. And another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall su su subscribe with his hand unto the Lord. Look at that. He said, now men started calling themselves by the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So we, ha we are having uh, the, the, the individuals now, them that were not, no longer calling, or there was no true worship anymore. There was no men that were called by the name of the Lord anymore. But now, after the birth of Enos, men started calling upon the name of the Lord. Men started now appreciating that is a God in heaven through Enos. Praise the name of the Lord. And, 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 and Cain, if you lead, you'll find out uh, chapter 5 and first number, first number, first number, first number 1, the Bible is saying, this is the book of the generation of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him, male and female. Look at this, male and female, a male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name uh, uh, their name Adam in the day when they were created in the day and I, uh, I, there's somebody also asked me a question about that because they say that Adam had another wife before Eve was created because the Bible is saying that they were created he them and before Adam was, before Eve was created. But I'll deal with that another day, God helping me. I like questions, even you listening to me. If you have a question, Bible question, send it to me. Write down there in the comment and I'll answer it through God's help. Through the scriptures. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible is saying, verse number three. And Adam lived an hundred and that years and begot a son in his likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Now, Cain is not there. Abel is not there. Why? Because Abel is dead. And the person that was born to replace Abel is Seth. But Cain is not regarded as one of the sons of Adam. Remember, in the book of Luke, in the book of Luke, uh, the uh, one of us in scripture, in the book of Luke, the Bible is saying, talking about the genealogy, the genealogy of Luke, the third chapter and verse number 38. The Bible is saying, Luke, the third chapter and verse number 38. The Bible says, uh, verse number 37. The Bible is saying, which was the son? He's talking about, about the genealogy. Of Jesus Christ, which was the son, but I want first number 38. The Bible is saying, uh, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam. Cain is not there, Abel is not there because Abel is replaced with Seth, and Cain is not counted among the sons of God, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Adam was the son of God. So when Genesis is saying the sons of God, it is referring to genealogy or the children that came from the lineage of Adam through, not Cain, but Seth. Who was a replacement? Replacing Abel that was killed by his evil brother. 
So you'll find we are talking about uh, the, the sons of these are the generation. These are the generation of Adam. In other words, we are talking about uh, giving the genealogies. Giving how Jesus even came on the face of the earth. It, was, it is followed from Joseph all the way to Adam. And the Bible says, and Adam was the son of. Praise the name of the Lord. And Adam was the son of. So we are talking about, uh, uh, he says, uh, I just wanted to, uh, to say here in the book of, uh, uh, in the book of uh, when Jesus started uh, preaching the gospel in the book of Luke, the third chapter, and verse number 20, uh, 23, the Bible is saying, and Jesus himself began to, uh, began to be about that years of age, being as was supposed uh, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Haya. Now that, now that, we follow that. We follow now how Jesus came. And you don't trace Jesus Christ through Cain to Adam, but you trace Jesus Christ to Adam through Seth. And that is why we are leading verse number 38. So this which was, which was, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Adam became the son of God, or was the son of God, and that lineage was followed. So remember there are two groups right there. There is one that is represented by Cain, who was of that wicked one, having human nature, fresh, being influenced by the flesh, and the desires and the pride of men, and we have another seed and another group that is represented by Seth that they are called by the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. So you'll find now when now Genesis is talking the same thing, Genesis the fifth chapter is talking about verse number three, it is talking about these are the sons and Adam lived. Adam lived. I'm talking to you, my brother, why we should appreciate the truth. Why we should, our salvation, our salvation is supposed to be, is supposed to be, uh, somebody may ask, why are you speaking all these? It is because we want to, uh, to have a child of God established in the truth. He said, first number one of the book of Luke, Acts, the first chapter, the former treatise. Have I made all the, the fillers of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach he is explaining and he said until the day in which he was taken up after that after uh, uh, after that he through the holy ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he have chosen he had chosen first number first number three the bible is saying to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion uh, by many invariable proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom pertaining to the kingdom of god so he is saying i, I want to prove to you now the same writer of the book of acts is called rook you'll find in the book of rook the first chapter and first number one he is saying that is why i'm so that your faith my brothers look the first chapter the bible is saying here in the book of Luke, the first chapter he said uh, First number one, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. First number two, he says, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. In other words, we have to come. First number three, he says, it is seemed good to me also, and that is seems good to this brother speaking to you. Having had perfect understanding of all these things from the very big from the very first to light unto thee in in order most excellent theophilus first number four that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast also been instructed 
In other words, the reason why Brother Benai is leading all this is to make sure that you yourself also might know the truth. That the, the Bible, that the, uh, the sons of God that the angel is talking about, that the Bible is talking about in the book of, uh, in the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, is not the angels. These are the progeny of Adam through Seth, not through Cain. And the daughters of men that the Bible is talking about, these are the daughters of Cain, the children that came from, from Cain, the lineage of Cain. So, back to the book of Genesis, the fifth chapter. Uh, I was trying to tell somebody why we are doing this. It's exactly what had prompted Luke to talk, to write the book of Luke and to write the book of Acts, is to make sure everybody understands. So the Bible is saying that uh, that uh, Abraham, the first number of three of the book of Genesis, and Abraham, uh, Adam, sorry, lived an hundred and th and thirty years and begot a son in his own likeness and in his own image and called his, him Seth. And to Seth, the Bible is saying, and now the, then man began to. He says, he man began now to call upon themselves uh, uh, by the name of the Lord. And we are seeing they are being given the lineage that we have led in the book of uh, in the book of uh, in the book of Luke, the third chapter. And the Bible is saying I may read Genesis the fifth chapter of jumping through few scriptures, verse number five, and all the days that Adam lived were nine hundred and that years and he died, first number six. And Seth lived a hundred and fifty years and begot Enos. Look at that. Adam, then Enos, then from Enos, first number nine, the Bible says, and Enos lived ninety years uh, and begot Canaan. Now from Adam, Enos, then Enos, or from Adam we have Seth, then from Seth we have Enos, then from Enos we have Canaan, and first number 12 we have another, and Canaan lived 70 years and begot another man there called Mahalarie. This is another. Now we are showing you the lineage. Then you find again we have first number, first number fifteen. We have Jared. Then first number eighteen. We have Enoch. Now not the Enoch, the son of Cain, but now Enoch. Now that walked with God and. He was not for God took him. Then we have Methuselah, first number 21. Then we have, Mer we have Lamech, first number 25. And first number 28, we see Noah. And Lamech lived in 100, 180 and two years and begot a son, first number 29. And he called his name Noah. Praise the name of the Lord. He called. So you find this, the posterity of Seth alone survived the flood. When God now saw. Now I want you to see here. Why now the book of Acts. We are opening now. Not Acts. Genesis now. The sixth chapter. Now we have now the sons of Adam. Through Seth. Enos. Uh, and the list. All the way up to Noah. And we have the other side, we have Cain and his progeny. We have the people of the people that came out of Cain. Remember, Cain built a city. That means they had also multiplied. They had also multiplied. And now at that point, at that point, the opening of Genesis, the sixth chapter, I was giving you the background, the separation between the two brothers, two brothers, sons of Adam, Cain and Abel, and Cain killed Abel, and Abel is replaced by Seth. And every one of them, they have their lineage. Now, the opening of Genesis, the sixth chapter, and it came to pass, verse number one, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters who are born of them. Now this man is referring to the children or the progeny of Cain. They started multiplying. Remember, they had built their own city. They had, were isolated in a certain area, but the number grew. And when they grew, they started spreading all over. 
and the sons of God, that is now the progeny of Adam through Seth. Now they saw, first number two, they saw, and the sons of God, the lineage of Adam, Seth, Enos, all the way to Noah, they saw the sons, the daughters of men, the daughters of Cain, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all of which they chose. In other words, they saw these children, uh, these daughters of Noah, and they admired them. Or rather, the daughters of uh, Cain, and they admired them. And when they admired them, now we are talking about two groups of people. One is born of Cain, who of, uh, was of that wicked one, and another group that was of Seth, who was called by the name of the Lord. In other words, there were men that were born. John said in the book of John, the first chapter and first number 13, they were not born of the will of the flesh. Where is the name of the Lord? Which were born not of, of blood, nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man, but of God. They were born of the will of God. They, the, the difference between the sons of God and the children and the daughters of men is that the daughters of men were born by the will of man, that is Cain, their father, who was that wicked one. And then the sons of God were them that were born of saints who were called by the name of the Lord. Thine we are. We are called by thy name. And they are born again, John the third chapter and verse number five. The Bible is saying, Jesus said unto us, Jesus answered, Very, very said to thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, born of water and of the spirit. Verse number six. They are born of the spirit, not of what not not now of the flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. So Cain was of the flesh, he was of that wicked one. And that which is born of the spirit is a spirit. And he is led of God. They are influenced. Now, the children of Cain were influenced by human pride. They were influenced by the feelings. Cain was influenced by his feelings and the pride of his heart. Why is the offering of my brother accepted and not mine? And because of that feeling, he is keen on how to kill him because he was after the flesh. But the children of Seth, Seth, Enos, they started calling on the name of the Lord. Why? Because they are moved by the Spirit of God. Uh, Romans, the, the, the eighth chapter and verse number 14. The Bible is saying, For as many as are led, by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We are not talking about angels there. It is you and me when now we get out of the flesh and we are led by the Spirit of God. We are no longer yielding to the influence of the flesh, but we are yielding to the leading of the Spirit of God. We are influenced. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, these sons of God are the ones in Genesis, the sixth chapter. They are the sons of God. But the daughters of men are them that are led by the feelings of their flesh. They make decisions and they make uh, choices by their feelings, by what they see, by what they feel, by what they touch. By what they hear, but somebody that is of God, they respond to the influence of the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons and the daughters of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we go back to the book of Genesis, we are seeing that separation clearly defined. The sons of God, they saw the daughters of men. In other words, the spiritual. The seed of Seth, who replaced Abel, they also multiplied. And some of them, they saw the daughters of men, that is from Cain's family, and they admired them. And they took them to be their wives. And that is why the problem came, and that is why the flood came. 
if this never happened, verse number three, if no, verse number three of Genesis, the sixth chapter, never happened, verse number three, if it, verse number two, sorry, if it never happened, then they, there was not going to be the flood because they took them wives of all which they chose. They went now among the family of Cain and they started taking wives for themselves. They started now the sons of Seth and Enos that came from there all the way to Noah. They intermingled. They married. Now we are saying the seed, the Bible is saying in the book of, uh, in the book of, uh, uh, in the book of Ezra, the ninth chapter and first number one. There was now, that was the problem. Ezra, the ninth chapter and first number one. Now when these things were done, the priests came to me saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites, have not separated themselves from the people of the lands. Now, that is the problem. All along from the time of Cain, when he killed his brother Abel, there was a separation. There was that separation, and there now, that separation, that is why Cain went and built himself a city and separated himself from now the rest of the people. But when the people started multiplying, they started mingling and the bible say doing according to their ab ab abomination even of the canaanites the hittites the parasites the jebusites and all these other people first number two and the bible say for they were take they they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons so men went among the heathen the wicked and they started taking wives for themselves and for their sons, like now the sons of God did. They went among the children of Cain and they started taking daughters for their wives and for the wives of their children. And the Bible said, so that the holy seed, the sons of God, the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those land. And that is a problem. They mingled. They started now mingling and marrying these daughters of Cain. The, daughter, the sons of Seth and Enos started marrying the daughters of Cain. And that and now they started mingling. Praise the name of the Lord. Again, and there's a problem right there when they mingle. Because the Bible is saying in the book of First Kings, uh, the 11th chapter and first number 3. First Kings, the 11th chapter and first number 3. And this is talking about Solomon. And the Bible says, and he had 700 wives, princes, and 300 concubines. And his wives, now that is a problem. And his wives turned away his heart. His, his, his wives Hand away his heart. That is where the problem is because mixed marriages between opposite principles and practice of faith always bring corruption among the true worship. One will be corrupted. When you have that is why in the fellowship we don't encourage mixed marriages in the faith. Because there will be a tendency of one learning the ways of the other party. And there will be corruption to their true faith. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible prohibits that. You should not marry. The Bible is saying, Nehemiah the 13th chapter and verse number 23. The Bible is saying, Nehemiah the 9th, 13th chapter. In those days also I saw Jews that had married wives of Ashdod. And of Ammon and of Moab, verse number 24. And the Bible says, And their children, look at that, spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jewish language, but according to the language of each people. Now, that is where the problem was when the sons of God, and these sons of God, I'm saying again, my brother, it is not angels, it is the people, the children that came from the lineage of Seth and Enos. All the way to Enoch, or rather to uh, to Noah. 
These are the people that had the name. They were called by the name of the Lord. And they called the name of the Lord. They had the true worship. They recognized God. And God was against that. So the, the, that these Mali, intermarriage, interfaith marriages, it, it doesn't help. It, it corrupts. It, it corrupts. It, it corrupts. It, it brings corruption. Praise the name of the Lord. It brings corruption. And they were married. Well, they married back to the book. Let me read first number 25 saying the word. And the Bible is saying, and I contented with them. And here was a man. Called of God, I feared God. He knew the law. He contented. Nehemiah contented with them and cast them. And smote certain of them and plucked even their hair. Making them to swear by God saying, you shall not give your daughters unto thy, their sons nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves. In other words, Nehemiah knew the danger. And in the time of Noah, they did know that. They started intermarrying the sons of God, which I say is the righteous seed, the holy seed that came from Seth and Enos and all the way to that time of Noah now. And there's another people that are called the daughters of men that is the children of Cain he that was of that wicked one as a child of God you will hesitate as a man you will hesitate that believes God to give your daughter to a man that don't believe God however much they are in love you cannot because your daughter will be corrupted their faith will be corrupted. The Bible is saying, and there was a lot of corruption. That is why the flood came. That is because sin, when they married, back to the book of, uh, let me lead, uh, let me lead First Kings. We were there, the, 13, the 11th chapter, and first number, we were first number, was it First Kings? We were reading First Kings, the 11th chapter, first number three. And this man called uh, Sol uh, Solomon, he had 700 wives, princes, and 300 concubines. And his wife turned away his heart. That is the problem. When the children of the sons of God married the daughters of men, then the daughters of men turned. Because it is very easy for a woman, whether a wife or a mother, it is very easy to exert influence on any man. It doesn't matter how strong they are. Whether it's a king, whether it's a president, whether it's a five-star general, a wife or a womb of mother has a, can easily exert that influence. And you find this king by the name of Solomon because of a woman that was not from the Jewish community, that was not a believer, has compromised. First number four, the Bible is saying, For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart from his heart after other gods. And that is the problem. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord, his God, as his father David was. Why? What happened? He married from the children of men. He married from the daughters of men. He married the daughters of men. In other words, people that were moved not by the spirit of God, but were moved by the flesh. How they feel. They don't fear God. They are not called by the name of God. That is why an unbeliever cannot be married, cannot marry a believer. Neither can a, a, a man that is a believer can marry a woman that is not an unbeliever. Where is the name of the Lord? Because th th there is that tendency that woman to exert influence. And these men that loved God, these men that was upholding true worship, Reference to God, it is start now dying off. Why? The sons of God have married. Back to the book of Genesis. The sons of God married. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. In other words, everybody was free to marry whoever they want. And what to you if you marry where you are, you are even in a church. Why well, your pastor cannot even guide you who you are marrying. Those you may you, you can't go out there and say I want to marry because I'm in love. Brother, if you are not careful, that woman will turn your heart away from God. And you start serving idols. You start serving her God. And that is what happened in the book of Genesis. And that is what brought the flood. 
and God said, uh, first number three of the book of Genesis, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is fresh, yet his days shall be an hundred, and that also brought now the problem, because the lest before this, the lest of men were staying 400 years, 900 years, 700 years, but now God, because of this intermarriage, the number of years was cut to 120 years. First number four. Because God saw there was corruption. I think the, 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 there was that corruption. If I may jump and lead first number 11 and first number 12. And Bible is saying, uh, Genesis the 6th chapter, and the earth was full of corruption before God. Why? Because the seed of God has been compromised. The people that loved God, loved God has been compromised. And the earth was filled with violence. Why? Two people have married. One is a son of God, a born again Christian. Somebody that believes in God. They are moved by the spirit and they have married somebody that don't even know there is God. They don't even know there is need of prayer. Going to church. And they ask, must you always go to church? Must you? And they be like the wife of Job, Job uh, the wife of uh, uh, Job, uh, the wife of Job. Who asked Job, are you still keeping your integrity? Are you still holding your in integrity? Why don't you cast God and we die? Look at that. Job had married a long person. And I thank God for Job. Job was strong. I said, you are speaking like one of the foolish women in Israel. Now, if you are not strong like that, it will be easy for you to be swayed. And that is why the flood book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, is talking about God's judgment. God saw, and the earth was full, and the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence, verse number 12, and the Bible says, and God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Why? The sons of God has married the sons, the daughters of men. There is that now intermarriage. And this brings God's love, brings God's judgment. First number, back up, first number four. The Bible is saying, uh, first number four, because of this, there was, and there, first number three, we led first number three, uh, God said he is not going to strive with men, first number four, and the Lord said there were giants in the earth in those days. And also that after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. Look at that. They started now fathering children. That they bear children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old men of Linon. In other words, there were men that were popular. It's a righteous seed, a holy seed has been mingled with the wicked and what they give birth is total confusion. That is where we find Nimrod, the mighty hunter before God. Hallelujah. So they bought, they, they gave birth to men. First number five, the Bible says, and God saw that the wickedness of men, because now what they were giving birth to, they did not God, was not a righteous seed. It was a mixed Lace, like Nehemiah is saying, they could not speak the, the, the speak of the, the language of one people or the other. They were just confusion. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This happened when the sons of God married the daughters of men. And I say again, my brother, my sister, the sons of God like here, it is not angels. It is you and me that you are, you are a believer. You are called by the name of God. And because you are sons, Galatians, the fourth chapter and verse number six, and because you are sons, God has given you. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. 
So you find now they are the sons of God and the daughters of men. And what they are giving birth to is evil, corruption. They are no longer serving God. They, 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 let me read Je Nehemiah, we were there. They are saying, Nehemiah, the 13th chapter and first number, first number 24, the Bible is saying, Nehemiah and their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod. There was confusion and could not speak in the Jewish language. They could not follow true worship. The children that are born between a mixed faith. Two people of different faith, the children are confused. They grow up in a confused state. They don't know whether they go to the God of the Ashdod or to the God of the Jews. So they get lost. So they say, we are not going to follow father to the church. We are not, not going to follow mother to her church. We are going to stay home. And in the, that, then confusion comes in and there is no worship. And their children speak, have in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jewish language but according to the language of his people. In other words, there was total chaos. That is why Nehemiah cast them and made them to swear never again. And because of this mixed marriage, that is what brought the flood. And God said, he has seen the evil on the face of the earth. And because of this evil, he is going to destroy the earth. He is going to destroy the earth. He is going to destroy everybody that was walking on the face of the earth. And the only person to be to survive was Noah and Noah and his family. The rest were destroyed because even those mixed races, children. In the book of Second Peter, the second chapter and verse number five, they were destroyed. God, when he saw and spared not the whole world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the, uh, bringing in the flood upon the earth of the ungodly. They became ungodly. There was no righteous seed anymore other than Noah. The rest were destroyed, and Noah was preserved. And the Bible is saying he saw and Noah found grace before God. It was not the seed of Cain, but the seed of Seth and Enos that was preserved. Because God saw that the imagination of men, and it grieved God. And God said, Genesis the 6th chapter, and verse number 7, and God said, I will destroy men from whom I have created. And the Lord said, I will destroy men of whom, whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and the beast, and the creeping thing, and the falls of the air, for it is repentant me that I have made them. Why? Because they intermarried. The sons of God, the believer, you who is a believer, you that is called a saint, you have uh, believed in God. You are supposed to keep that lineage. Don't go and mix yourself with the daughters of men, them that I have not believed. Go to them that I have believed and you marry like the mothers and the parents of Samson kept on telling Samson. When he went down uh, and he, 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 he saw a fair girl of the Philistines and he admired her, he loved her, but his parents said, you cannot marry from people outside our faith but samson insisted how many young people have destroyed themselves they loved god they were committed to god until they got married and they married from the daughters of the sons of men and they were corrupted and all the love they had for god all the concern they had for god's people it is taken away. It is eroded. Why? You intermingled and the holy seed mingled with the seed of the wicked. And Samson, he lost his eyes because of insisting of marrying him being a Nazarite. The Bible is saying he was a Nazarene. Not taste, not taste wine, not even his hair being cut. Because he was a called child of God. He was a son of God. 
and he refused and he married Deraira. And because of that, the anointing, corruption came in his life. And anointing left. That is why Abraham made his servant to swear when he said, I want you to go and get a wife for my son Isaac. He said, I want you to swear that you get a wife from my kindred, not from anybody else. Not from Adam. Abraham was a son of God. And he said, I want you to go among other children of God and you get a wife there from my son, not anybody else. And you, my brother, you are counted. If you are a believer, my sister, you are counted the seed of God. And you cannot mingle. And the earth was destroyed. The whole human family, save Noah and his family, was destroyed because of the sons of God, believers, marrying the non-believers. Even Paul said, what fellowship does, have, does darkness have with light? What fellowship? We cannot have fellowship. People of different faiths, people that have not believed God, marrying them that have not believed in God. It will be repeated all over again. And if you get yourself into that, you young men listening to me, what you are building, you are building something that will be destroyed because there will be total chaos. Your children will know who speak half Ashidot and, and, and half of the Jews' language. The faith and the non-believing. And your children will bring corruption. And that is what I wanted to answer that question that that individual asked me. Because he was told the sons of God in Genesis, the sixth chapter, is well, they were angels. No, they were not angels. They were men like you and me that believed in God. And because you are sons, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are called the sons of God. And as many, John, the, the first chapter and first number 12, the Bible is saying, but as many as received him, to them gave he power. To become sons of God. And you, when you received Jesus Christ, you became a son of God. Anybody that have not received Jesus Christ cannot be called a son of God. They are called sons or children of men. Born after the flesh. But you, you are born again. Though your mother and your father gave birth to you in the flesh. But you are born again the second time in the spirit. And now you become a son of God. Like Seth and Noah and Enos. All that. And every other believer that have believed in God. They are called sons of God. So you cannot have the sons of God marrying the daughters of men. That have been born only once. Not the second time. They have been born once after the flesh. So if you want to get married. Marry them that have been born the second time. Nic Nicodemus asked, how can I go in? No, he said, you have to be born by the Spirit of God. And once you're born, then you're given power to become a son or a daughter of God. And if you're a daughter of God, you cannot be married. Because you'll be repeated Genesis, the sixth chapter again. When the sons of God saw the daughters of men, they were fair, and they took wives out of them. And because of that corruption, came on the face of the earth and God saw that the wickedness of man has increased in the earth and God said I will destroy I will destroy these mixed marriages cannot bring salvation cannot bring, bring glory to God and that is why Nehemiah made them to swear and some of them plucking their hairs that pain they feel the pain Packing their hair saying, I want you to swear that you will never take a woman or a girl for your daughter, for your son, from the ungodly, from the Ashdods, from the Jebusites, from all these unbelieving people. Praise the name of the Lord. Because if you do that, then we'll go back again to the same, the book of Genesis, where the world will be filled with corruption and God will say I cannot let go so my brother the sons of men the sons of God is you and me
who are believers. The daughters of men are the children of non-believers, the children of Cain. He that is of that wicked one, because his works were wicked, were evil. But his brother's work was righteous. So God bless you. And I said, if you have any question in our teaching, in our preaching, we have led a scripture that maybe have prompted you to ask another question, write it down there. I'll deal with it, I'll answer it through God's help, through the word of God. And God will help us uh, to be instructed in this way. So God bless you, brethren. God keep you. I want to close with a lot of prayer for the God in the name of Jesus. I thank you for my viewers. Thank you for that brother, that sister. Dear God, I pray that the word that I have gone for thy here would help them to know who they are. They are called of thee. They are your children. They are your sons and your daughters. And you said they cannot mingle the holy seed with the seed of the wicked. Dear God, help them to abide and, uh, to abide in the truth and to perpetuate this gospel. The family of God to expert when we marry them that we believe the same gospel, they believe the same thing. Dear God, help us that we may be called sons and daughters of God. I thank you, dear Master. Let your spirit be upon your people. As the Bible has said, and as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. I pray that this power, my God, be given to that brother, that sister that I have accepted and received you. And as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Let them be led of the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, that we may hold on the truth. We be called by your name, O God Almighty. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. I pronounce a blessing over their lives in all their endeavors. Dear God, in their going out and their coming in, O Jehovah Master, keep them away from danger. And let the angel of your presence, dear Lord, go before them, making every crooked way straight and removing every stubborn block. In the name of Jesus, I pronounce divine favor over your people. In Jesus' mighty name I do pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. God keep you. God preserve you until we meet again. Amen. Thank you.